What is up guys, welcome back. Today I wanna to show you how we can make this amazing sticky cursor effect that I've seen in a lot of awards winning websites. I'm going to recreate this using firm emotion, next chess, and some trigonometry. And as always guys, the live demo and the source code are available in the description below. All right, so the first thing I have here is a basic next chess application. I have a components folder where inside of it, I've created a header component with a burger menu. And then inside of the page.js, I've imported that header. And we should have something like this, very simple to start the tutorial. I have a very basic burger menu. And I can also scroll and you can see that the burger menu is in position fixed. And so when I scroll, it stays here. All right, so the first thing I'm doing here is creating the sticky cursor component. I'm doing that inside of the components folder, creating a simple div, importing it inside of the page.js. And then I've added some styling. And we should have something like this, a very basic, cursor here that's in position fixed so if I scroll it stays here and now the first thing we can start doing is to animate the cursor on mouse move so what I'm going to do is make it follow the mouse and we're going to use frame motion for that so we can go ahead and do npm install frame motion and then after that we can go here and import motion from frame motion and we can add the motion tag in front of the cursor division and that way we can effectively animate the cursor using frame motion and then the first thing I'm doing here is creating a mouse object where I'm going to store the position of the mouse coming from a mouse move event that I initialize inside of a use effect hook and now the concept is I want to use those positions and give it to the cursor to be able to move it. And so what I can do here is add some styling to the division and I can change the left value to be equal to the mouse.x and the top value to be equal to the mouse.y. But now if we do that, it's actually not going to work because React won't re-render the component. And so the styling here will actually never change. And so there would be basically two ways of forcing React to re-render the component and effectively changing the style. One way would be to create a state and then we could store that mouse inside of the state and we could update the state and that would re-render the component. But we can actually do it in another way and that's using the motion values. And so we have here the use motion value from firm motion that we can can use here to initialize the X and the Y values. And then inside of the manage mouse move, we can actually go and set the property to be the client X and same thing for the Y. And we should have something like this. We have the cursor following the mouse, but as you can see, it's kind of not perfectly aligned with the cursor. And that's because the top and left position are at like the top left corner and not in the middle. And so what we could have here is a const cursor size. And in the CSS, I said it was 20 pixels. So I'm going to have it be equal to 20. And then when I'm setting the mouse, I can simply subtract the size of the cursor divided by two on both axes. And by doing that, it's now perfectly centered. So that's really nice. But there's also another problem, which is not really a problem, but the cursor is not really smooth. It's following step by step, like straight up the mouse, which is not really nice. I would like it to have like a bit of an easing. And we can do that very easily using another hook from firm motion called the use bring hook. And then I can create another object, which I'm going to call the smooth mouse. And it's going to have a next value, which is essentially going to be the use spring value of the mouse.x. And on the Y, it's going to be the use spring as well, but for the Y axis. And then inside of the division here, instead of using the position of the mouse, we're going to use the position of the smooth mouse. And as you can see here, I have the cursor following my mouse, but now there is a spring that is applied to it. And as you can see, it looks a bit wild. So what I can do is start adding options to that use spring. And so I have my options here, which I tweaked beforehand uh, to find a really nice value that I like, but you could try this yourself and change like the damping, the stiffness and the mass to see what you prefer. But those are basically properties that change the physics of the use spring. And so what I can do then when I have the options is to simply pass them here as parameters. And now I have something like this, a nice cursor with some physics applied. And to me, that's a really nice cursor. And with that, I can actually start sticking the cursor to the object here. And the first thing I'm going to need here is a way to have access to the burger menu inside of the cursor component. And so I'm going to go in the parent, which is the page.js for this example. And I'm going to create a ref, which I'm going to call it the sticky element. And it's going to use the use ref hook from React. And then I'm going to be able to give the sticky element to the cursor. And now the sticky element is going to be an element inside of the header here. So what I can do is pass a ref props, which is going to be equal to the sticky element. And I can go inside of the header here. And I'm going to basically give the ref to the burger menu here. But now this ref here is not recognized. And I cannot pass the ref here simply like that. It won't work. What I need to do is use the forward ref function from React. And so I can import it here. And then I can have here a const header. And now by doing that, the index here has access to its props and a reference that I'm passing it here inside of the page.js which is the sticky element. And now I can give that ref to the burger. And here 
also need to export the header instead of the index function. And with that, I effectively have access inside of the cursor to the sticky element, which is an element inside of another component. And so here I'm going back inside of the sticky cursor and I have access to the sticky element. And now that I have access to the sticky element, I can actually create an internal state to track if the component is hovered or not. And then I can add some event listeners. I'm going to add the mouse over and the mouse leave events on the sticky element. And inside of those functions, I can set if the object is hovered or not. And we should have something like this. We now have an is hovered value that is telling us if we are hovering on top of the burger menu. And just for an example, I can actually use that function here and have the cursor size, for example. If I am hovering, I can have it equal to 60 else 20. And then to have it effectively working, what I can do here is add an animate property, which is coming from firm emotion. And I can change the width to be equal to the cursor size. And I can have the height to be equal to the cursor size. And if I try this out, you can see that it's actually working. When I'm hovering the burger menu, my cursor is getting bigger. And when I leave it, it's getting smaller again. But now we have kind of a problem here. The cursor is like overlapping on top of the menu, which is not the best. And so to fix that problem, we can use the mix blend modes. And so I'm going to go in the styling here of the header and I can use the mix blend mode to be equal to difference. And then for the background color, instead of having it black, I'm going to have it white here. And when I'm hovering, I now have the cursor that's working fine. All right, now that we have the cursor moving and the detection of the burger menu, we can actually stick it to it. And so what I'm gonna do here is inside of the manage mouse move where I'm moving the cursor every time the mouse is moving, I can actually check if my cursor is hovering the burger. If it is not hovering the burger, then I want to move the mouse. And then I'll try this. It's actually moving. When I hover, it's not moving anymore. And when I leave the cursor, it moves again. So that's pretty good, but it's actually not going in the center of the burger menu, which is the thing that I want. And the good thing is since I have the sticky element here as props, I can actually extract properties from it. So I'm gonna go here and I can actually extract the left, top, width, and height property from it. And I can get that using the get bounding client rect. And now that I have those values, I can create here a center point, which is going to be equal on the X axis to be the left plus the width divided by two. And the Y will be the top plus the height divided by two. And with that, I have the center point of the cursor. And I can basically use that center point here on the X and the center point on the Y to set the mouse perfectly centered around the cursor. And if I try this, you can see that when I'm hovering the cursor, it's actually going perfectly at the center of it. And there's a problem we have now, which is when I'm moving the mouse away, it's not going very far. I can only move like just outside of it and then the cursor unsticks. And that's because it's triggering the mouse leave event very soon because the element is super small. And so what we need to do is boost the boundaries of that mouse leave event, which is going to enable me to move my mouse a bit further away from the cursor. So I'm going to go in the header here and I'm going to create a div that I'm going to call the bounce. And then I can go in the styling here and I'm going to give it like a border just to see it. And then I can give it a width and a height of 100%. Oh, and actually the bounce are inside of the burger here. So, and then I want it to be a bit bigger than the burger itself. So I can create here a transform value and do a scale. And I'm gonna scale it, for example, by three. And I can save this. And now you can see that my bounds are here, but it's looking a bit weird. I'm gonna put it in position absolute. And now that kind of makes sense, but I believe it is not perfectly centered. So what I can do is do a left zero, top zero. And so now that I have that, if I hover, you're going to see that my mouse is now sticking to the cursor way before and it's expanding also the boundaries, which is like the range from which it's going to stick. But the thing is, I want it to stick only when I hover perfectly on it, but I want to keep those boundaries for the mouse leave event only. So what I'm going to do here is keep the scaling when I hover on it only. And so now by doing that, if I hover on the cursor, it's going to stick. And then when I leave, the boundaries are going to be bigger. And so I have this effect here, but we're going to have a problem and you're going to see if I move my mouse here, you're going to see that the boundaries are kind of getting, there's a bug basically here. And so what I want to do here is basically remove the pointer events from the burger menu and I'm going to add them for the bounds only. And that should solve the bug. And one last thing here, instead of putting the reference on the burger, I'm going to put it on the bounds, which is going to help us create the stretching. And so if I save that, I basically have the same result that I had before. I now have a larger range for the mouse leave event and I can remove the borders and we have something like this. All right. So now what I want to do here is to slightly move the cursor 
the more I move away from it. So I don't want it to be perfectly sticked very strongly. To have the effect that I want, I want to be able to slightly move it while I'm moving my mouse away just to have like that really nice sticky effect, which is kind of like pushing it away slowly but surely. And so to have that effect here, I'm going to create another object here, which I'm going to call the distance. And what I want to have here is the distance between my pointer, the pointer of my mouse and the custom cursor. And so what I'm going to have here is a distance object and it's gonna have an X and Y value. And here I wanna calculate the distance, right? So I can have the client X, which is the position of my pointer and I can subtract it the center of the custom cursor and I can do the same thing on the Y axis. And with that, I effectively have the distance. And here when it's hovered, instead of perfectly sticking it, I'm gonna change the values here, adding some parentheses and I'm gonna add here the distance and I'm gonna do like 0.1 just to add a bit of that distance. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. And if I try this, you can see that it's sticking. And now the more I'm moving away, the more it's going towards my cursor. And now I essentially wanna do the same thing, but for the burger menu, I wanna have it move a bit when I move my mouse so that the effect is shared not only on the cursor, but also on the element where it's being sticked to. And thankfully, I've already done such an animation in the past. And as you can see here, the live demo, I have basically the same thing, kind of a magnetic effect that I basically want to apply on top of the burger menu here to be able to move it. All right, so I have the magnetic component. I've imported it inside of the components folder. And thankfully, I've also made this using firmer motion so everything fits together. And so what I can do is go inside of the header and I'm gonna import the magnetic component. And what I can easily do is wrap the burger here inside of the magnetic component. And yeah, it kind of works, but it looks a bit crazy. I'm gonna have to adjust the values here. If I go inside of the magnetic here, when I'm setting the middle point, I'm gonna just reduce the values here to not have it be too extreme. And if I try this out, that kind of makes sense. And now to complete this animation, we have two more steps to do. One is to actually stretch the cursor when we move the mouse. And the second step is going to be to rotate the cursor towards the mouse. And for that, we're gonna have to use some trigonometry. So let's actually start with the stretching. The first thing I'm gonna do here, similar to the smooth mouse and the mouse, I'm gonna create an object here, which I'm gonna call the scale. And it's gonna have a next value equal to a use motion value of one and X, same thing, use motion value of one. And then I can grab that scale, go inside of the styling here, and I'm gonna add here the scale X to be equal to the scale dot X and the scale Y to be equal to the scale dot Y. And now I can effectively change the properties of the scale object here, and it's going to basically change the styling of the div here. So the first thing I need here to create the stretching is to have the absolute distance. Right now we have a distance that has both axes, the X and the Y, and it can also be negative. For example, if I go here, the distance would be 50. And if I go on the other side, the distance would be like minus 50. And so what I wanna have here is an absolute distance because I don't really care if it's negative, positive on the X axis or on the Y axis. I just want to have the distance. And so what I'm gonna have here is an absolute distance which is going to be equal to the math.max. So either the distance x or the distance y. Just give me the biggest one. And I'm gonna actually do the math.absolute because I don't care if it's positive or negative. And I can grab the distance.x and here I can grab the distance. Dot y. And so now this is giving me the biggest distance there is between the custom cursor and the pointer, be it on the y axis or on the x axis, and also in a positive value. And now I can use that absolute distance here to create the stretching. I'm gonna have a new scale x, which is going to be equal to the transform hook from firm motion. Well, it's not a hook, it's a function that comes from firm motion, and it needs a base value. I'm gonna use the absolute distance, and I can specify the range of that absolute distance, which is going from zero and the width of the element divided by two. And so that's basically the range of the possible values of the absolute distance. Meaning if we are at the center here, the absolute distance is zero. And if we're right at the edge here, it's going to be equal to the width of the sticky element divided by two. And then I can have another set of range, which is going to be equal to the new scale. And I can say that when the absolute distance is zero, it's going to be equal to one. And when the absolute distance is equal to the width divided by two, which is like the border, it's going to be equal to maybe 1.3. And with that, the greater the distance, the greater the scaling on the X axis. And I'm gonna do the same thing, but for the Y axis. And then instead of stretching it bigger for the scale Y, I'm gonna stretch it down. So it's going to create like a nice like ellipse like this. And now that I have those values, I can simply set the X here to be the new scale X and scale the Y to be the new scale Y. And if I save this, you can see that my cursor is now stretched. And if I come closer to the center, you can see that it's not stretching. 
and the further I'm going, it's stretching. But now I don't want it to be stretched when it's not sticky. So I'm gonna grab that whole code and I'm gonna put it inside only if we are currently hovering the sticky element. So we can see here my cursor is normal. And then when I go over the cursor, you're gonna see the more the distance, the greater the scaling. So that's pretty good. But now we have a problem. You're gonna see that if I leave, my cursor is still stretched which is not good. I want it to be normal. And to fix that problem, we can simply imperatively animate the cursor. So what I'm going to do is create a reference, which is going to be called like cursor ref. And I can have here the cursor ref, which is going to be equal to the use ref hook from React. And I can do animate, which is a function from frame motion. And I can animate the cursor ref dot current. And I'm going to animate the scale X to be equal to one and the scale Y to be equal to one. And then I can add a duration of like maybe 0 0.1. And I can add a type, which is going to be a spring animation, which is like a physics based animation. And you can see that when I'm leaving, it's resetting the scale back to zero. The only thing that's left to do is rotate the cursor to always point towards the pointer of the mouse. The first thing I want to do here is every time I move my mouse, if I am hovered on the sticky element, I'm just going to call a rotate function and I can define the rotate function here. And what I'll need is to figure out an angle and to figure out that angle, I'm going to use a trigonometry function called the math atan2. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it. And this is going to give us back an angle, which we can then apply to the rotation value of the custom cursor. And now I've created this graphic just to explain to you guys what's the math atan2 because it's really hard to explain without any visuals. So this is the function here. It takes two points, an x and a y value, and it returns us an angle. So I have here a screenshot of just a case, just an example of what we would like to do. I have my pointer here. I have my custom cursor here, and I would like it to rotate towards the pointer here. So if I use the math atan2 function, what I can have here is basically the line here is the line here, and the angle is the angle here. And so if I find this point here, the x, y point, which would be this line here, here, then I could get the angle and I could apply this to the rotation of the custom cursor. And now what the hell is this x, y? Well, if you recognize this, this is basically the distance between the pointer and the center of the cursor. And so this is basically here the distance that we calculated before. We have the client x and the client y, which is the position of the pointer. And we have the center x and center y. And if we subtract them, we have the distance. That's what we did before to do the stretching. And so that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to pass the distance object to the rotate function. I'm going to have it here. And then I can simply do the distance.y and the distance.x, which is if we look at the math atom 2, it requires the y first in the parameters. And then to apply the angle, I'm going to use the animate function and I'm going to animate the cursor ref.current and I'll animate the rotate value, which is going to be equal to the angle in radians. If we take a look at the math atom 2, it returns in radians here. And then since we are calling the rotate function every time we move the mouse, I'm just going to do a duration of zero. This in theory, it should be working. I'm going to try it out. And if I try this, it's actually not working. But if I take a look at the element here, I can actually see that I'm actually rotating the object. So this is like actually working. You can see that the rotation value is changing. My object doesn't seem to be rotating though, which is something that absolutely broke my mind for a long time. And, and that's because the order inside of the transform value here actually matters, which is kind of a headache to understand. I tried to understand the math behind it, but it was like super complicated. So basically we need to put the rotation before the scaling because the transformations are actually applied in order. And so right now the scale X is applied and then the scale Y is applied and then the rotation is applied. And we kind of want to put the rotation before applying the scale. That would be the order. And that's why right now it's not working. So to change the order of the transform property, we cannot really do that inside of the styling here. It's not something that we can specify, but thankfully Framer Motion has something called the transform template. And here we can specify the order. And here I could have the template and I'm just gonna create here a template function. And that template is gonna have the rotation, the scale X, and the scale y and that's going to be equal to a function and then here i can return a template and that's where i specify the order so i have here the rotate which is equal to the rotate then i have the scale x which is equal to the scale x and then same thing for the scale y and by saving this we should have our new order which should make everything work and we can try this out here and you can see boom we have the final effect so that was it for this tutorial i hope you learned something i learned a lot while doing it if you liked it leave a like subscribe and i'll see you in the next one